Page 31, don't tell it on the mountain. At the top of the page, they show a little bit about syncopation. Syncopation, have we had it before? It's where you're, the rhythm is off just a little bit. You're playing notes when you don't expect to, or you don't get a note when you expected one, or whatever. It, just, it throws the rhythm off just a little. Gives it an edge. Huh. I'll talk about it in more detail when we get into the piece. Common time, two flats were in the key of B flat major. So go to my scale videos, one on B flat major, and make sure you can do it at least one octave up and down. If you know the scale, go ahead and go two, but if you don't know the scale, don't do two, one. And while you're there, do G minor. That also has two flats. So cover this one hand at a time. Common time or four, four time? Did I say that? I don't remember. And we have these dotted eighth note, sixteenth notes pattern, but it's one and two and three and four and two, three E and a three E and a four E and a or three and four and or you feel it. Three just don't turn them into triplets. Three and a no, keep the short note short. Last major, the first line, this is syncopation. They've counted it out in the middle. The numbers between the stabs are the counting. One and two and. That's where it is. One and two and three and four and. Go down to the third line. Here, the counting. One and two and three. See the, the eighth note and the dotted quarter note. It's a dotted rhythm, but they switch the notes. Now you get the short note first. They do that. Uh, but together, it's two beats for both notes. One and two and three and four. Three e and a four. Whatever. Now lift up to go on. This isn't bad. Quarter notes. Now come down here. Now if this doesn't work for you, we have to change the fingering. So in the last major third line, here and then here for this, instead of two, come reach down to your third. Now you can reach second. Here. That's another way of fingering it. I leave it up to you and your teacher. It depends on how big your hands are and how fat your fingers are. But if they're small enough, the fingering in the book is fine. Last line, you're here. And again, the same fingering as you had before, depending on how you figure it. And then a fourth, two, and then an octave. You need to go back up to the top. And there would go a fifth finger again. I don't like that type of idea. If I don't have to do this, I prefer not to. So I would suggest when you go back up to the top, after the DC, go ahead and use fifth or fourth finger, either one. And then immediately substitute, put a fifth finger on it. Whichever finger you use, go ahead and put fifth finger on it. So you're ready to go on. Left hand, broken chords mostly. It's your... Try and connect this. Here. And if this doesn't work for you up in here, then you're going to have to do that. It's a little, little stretchy, but it's doable. So even you can do that if you have to, but otherwise do that with the thumb. Third line, we're here. Two, three. I want to connect all these with the hands. Then lift up, come down. Next to the last line, the last measure. It's a cross under. Put the hands together, slowly, more or less. tell in the last measure the first line between the staves how the notes line up in each staff so the first ones are together and then that's this is by itself and then 
the left hand by itself, and the right hand by itself, and then the third. So, so they're they're blah, 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 wonky wonky. quite different in each of the hands. You have to work that out. Just go over the bits and pieces where they're, you're hesitating and so forth and get rid of that hesitations. You don't have to go as fast as I'm going. You can take it real slow but the beat needs to be a steady beat at some speed. Then we can add the articulation which would be the slurs or the phrasing. In the left hand I suggest for the most part you connect the left hand all the way through. Just connect it all. You can't connect it totally but do the best you can. Just connect it all. On the right hand we have the phrases. Left. Just left. So I'd like to the left hand I keep them down. So lifting up here. Again I'm lifting in the right hand but not the left. the thin and thick bar line there. You got to move both hands up here. They go in opposite directions, different distances. Oh, this is fun. Go from here to here. It's like there's an eighth rest instead of the, at, at the end of the second measure. One, two, three, and four in. And during that rest, I just come up. They're saying two. Yeah, I have two. I can come down. I mean, I gotta lift up anyway. I can move. Lift up. And at the end, now at the bottom, last measure. Go to the top, you lift up the right hand, it's like taking a breath. But the left hand, I connect it. Just it's so. so forth, that's the phrasing. Then the dynamics go to the melody, which is in the right hand, moderately loud, whatever that is. It's so, sort of loud. Keep the left hand soft. Staying that way more or less, you don't have to stay exactly. You can get a little louder and softer as you feel the music eventually. But in the third line, you're going to crescendo up to loud in that measure. So save most of your crescendo toward the end, though. And that's the right hand that's loud. The left hand stays in the background. And all of a sudden, you go down to moderately soft. The left hand's very soft. line you're going to crescendo up to loud again. So you're starting up very soft, moderately soft. That note is loud. Then back to moderately loud. That's sort of the dynamics. You experiment with it and feel these dynamics eventually. Speed-wise, well, Cone Brio is not a speed. It's with brilliance. It's, this is a happy piece. This is you're announcing it. Da 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 da. Go to the top of the mountain and do all that wonderful stuff. It's a, they don't give you the words here. This is a Christmas piece, typically. But yeah, you know, it's a it's a happy piece. Now. Pedaling-wise, they've offered some more pedaling, and I don't understand their pedaling in this book at all. In my opinion, you scribble out all their pedaling markings, but I would like to offer some other pedaling suggestions for this piece. You see, when we use the pedal, there's specific reasons why we're using it. And this piece gives me a chance to explain one of those reasons, so that's what I want to talk about. And that is that on piano, when you play repeated notes, we can't really connect them. 
I mean, there might be actually a way to do it, but it's very difficult and it doesn't work on all pianos. I don't want to get into it. But typically, we just say you can't connect them. The only way to connect them is with the pedal. You use the pedal. There we can connect them. Of course, that adds all the overtones. You can hear a difference in the sound, so you have to be careful. But in this piece, we can use that technique to help us connect the repeated notes. Like in the first measure, I have to play that D twice. I have to play it twice. I like to connect those. I don't want silence between them. So I'm just going to use pedal to help me connect the note. And then once I've played the, 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 ne the second D, I release the pedal. So it's here. Right there. All I did is connect it. So I'm suggesting you a little bit of pedal, and that actually sort of coincides with what they're suggesting in their pedaling mark. That's sort of what I'm doing. But in the second measure, I don't pedal that measure. In the second line, second measure is the same as the first measure. Pedal down. Last measure, the second line, don't pedal that. Now you can, if you want, at the end of the third line, second measure, at the end, they're showing a pedal. You can do that to help keep the sound going as you move your hands. You can do that, but I don't want to connect the sound. I don't want here to here. I don't want to connect it. I want silence between them. So I gotta lift the pedal up before I play the notes in the next measure. So in my opinion, you don't need pedal for that then. You can just leave it out. Now here, I like to connect those two Fs. This is the third line down last measure. I like, so I'm gonna use the pedal just to connect the Fs. It's not like what they're marking. I'm doing it between the second and third beat. I want to connect the Fs. I'm only doing it to do that, and then I release it when I play the second F. I could use it to hear, but this is background. I, I don't care if I connect that or not. And in the fourth line down, I don't pedal that measure. line first measure again I, I connect the Fs. Just the F. That's all. And I'm, a, I'm only using pedal to connect the repeated notes in the right hand that I want to connect. And that's one of the reasons we use it. Now in the last measure the first line you have repeated C's. I typically don't pedal these because I prefer to have the silence between them. It gives contrast between connecting them. It brings out the syncopation. If I connect them, and with the left hand doing its stuff, it gets a bit muddy in there. So I don't, I don't pedal that measure or any measure like it. It's like in the third line down first measure. I don't pedal that. I don't need to connect those. So you have to decide which notes you want to connect, repeated notes, or which you don't. And you use the pedal to connect, connect the ones you want to connect, and that's all. At the bottom, the last two measures, I could connect that, those two C's. Probably won't, I mean, that's fine. You experiment with the pedaling, and it's a personal choice anyway, or your teacher will tell you what you're going to choose. So. It's kind of complicated because now you've got to, exactly when do you push the pedal down? Well, welcome to playing the piano because that's part of it. So I encourage you to work on that. After you've learned the notes and gotten them under your fingers, because you've got enough to think about there first before you add the work on the feet. Well, roadmap wise as to when do you go where? Where are we going? Well, at the bottom of the page, you see the DC Alfine. DC means go back to the beginning. Alfine means go to Fine. The Fine is at the end of the second measure in the third line. You see a thin and thick bar line. That's the symbol for the end of a piece of music. Piece. You simply play up to that point and quit, and that's where we're going. 
So I'd like to play it with you very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms and all that stuff. I'm going to pet it as I suggested. I'm not going to do any dynamics. I'll give us four cats and we'll do the DC and all that stuff. So here we go, slowly. One, two, ready, go.